A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Good morning, Phil. That was amazing. That was was sliding in with spin. Gotta gotta practice this more to to perfect this art. Uh, <laughs> on um, Friday, I suppose, yeah, Friday, we talked about how to turn repeating decimals, periodic ones, okay, um, into so numbers like 0 dot six nine six nine six nine blah 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 into um, yeah fractions, and we found out that each and every periodic decimal expansion can be expressed as a rational number. And what I said at the end of the video is that I'm going to make a video on a more generalized version, namely, for example, numbers like this, where it doesn't start with an O in the front, but also where the periodic decimal expansion can start somewhere in between, okay, for, for example, at the fifth digit. So there, there is a way it's starting here at this very beautiful individual. And um, we can also turn those into fractions. And I'm going to show you how today. And to be more precise, this is a proof video. So what we are going to do is we are going to show that each and every repeating decimal um, ex expansion is actually a rational number. So none of those numbers, even though they go on forever, are irrational. Okay, um, and we are going to show this by just um, writing everything out as a fraction, then arguing a tiny little bit and then we are done. Hope you are going to enjoy this video and now we are going to dive right in. So at first, um, this is just a numeric example that we are going to use um, at the end of the video to prove our point a bit more. Um, we are going to take a look at some random arbitrary decimal expansion of a number in, in some way, okay? Let us suppose that we have an integer at the front, like 420. We are going to say that some number r consists of, um, let's say, some integer in front. Let's call it a, really doesn't matter. And then we got the dot here. And after that, we are going to have a bunch of digits, okay, which are going to be stacked one after another, d1, up until, let's say, dn, okay. Those are n digits that we have after the dot. And after those n digits, there is the periodic expansion, which is going to start. Last time around, we said that, yeah, we, we, we can give this periodic extension a new name. Let's say this thing is just p, which is going to repeat endlessly. Now, I want to write out p a tiny little bit more. Um, at first, we have that a is an element of the positive or negative integers. Really doesn't matter. And we have that p, we are going to define it as, okay, so we have, um, I don't know how many digits. We have a bunch of digits, which are going to start off at the decimal point um, n plus one. So we got digit n plus one up until, okay, so what we have is n plus, and let's say our periodic expansion has m digits coming with it, okay, n plus m. So for example, our m in this case right here is two because 69 is going to repeat itself all the time. This is what it looks like right now. And now we are going to manipulate this a tiny little bit more. At first, I would like to rewrite r as the addition of two things. Namely, we have a certain integer part, which is a, and then we have a certain fractional part because each and every decimal number, okay, can be expressed as the um, integer part in, in some way. In normal case, you use brackets for that. So the integer part of r plus our fractional part of r. Okay, that's what you can do. I, I, I mean, it does make sense. 1.5 is nothing but one plus one half, okay, dot five. So meaning our R in the process is hence nothing other than, so we are going to have A as being the integer part plus, and now we are going to have O dot, and now we have D1 up until the N times our periodic part. Now what we are going to do is we are going to use the trick that we have used in the last video. Namely, what we want to do is we want to drag the periodic part right to the front of our little dot that we're having here. For this, what we are going to do is we are going to multiply basically our d1 up until the, the n, then the p periodic with some 10 to the nth power. Or we can rather say if we have, for example, 0 0.5 as a decimal, or let's say 0 0.25, this is the same as saying, okay, we have 25 times two squared, because we have two decimal places right here, and to get rid of the decimal places and to the negative tooth power, I'm terribly sorry, what we are going to do is we are going to say this expression right here, this decimal expansion, is the same thing as 25 divided by 100, 
okay? And then we are going to get 0 0.25 out. Meaning what we had, we had two decimal places right here. And here in our generalized case, we have n decimal places, giving us a plus. And now to bring those d d1 up until the n to the front, we are just going to multiply what we have here by 10 to the negative nth power. And this is going to be multiplied with d1 up until the n, where d1 up until the n is just a concatenation of the digits. Okay, meaning in our case we got rid of the 420 here. All that's left is 0 0.1234, meaning we are going to track the 10 to the negative fourth power to the outside, giving us overall 1234, so 1234 dot 696969 in the process. So dot p and then with our little um, periodic bar on top. Now, what we got here is basically once again the situation that we had up here. This right here is just basically now, so if we ignore this, an integer part plus some kind of fractional part. Okay, let us ignore the 10 to the negative nth power and let's treat it like what we have up here and then at the end we are just going to multiply the 10 to the negative nth power in. So what we have here is nothing other than d1 dot 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 up until the n and then all of this added to o dot p periodic. Meaning if we were to multiply the 10 to the negative nth power n, we are going to get a plus. And now after that, 10 to the negative nth power multiplied with d1 concatenated up until the n. And then what we are going to get is plus 10 to the negative nth power times 0 dot p periodic. And this is why I made the video before. It was kind of a corollary <laughs> to, to what we have here now because 0 dot p periodic is nothing other than our p that we're having here divided by 10 to the nth power minus 1. Um, 10 to the nth power, I'm terribly sorry, because we are having m places here. It, it goes from 1 up until m, meaning it has m decimal places coming with it. So we need 10 to the nth power. Meaning overall, our r that we had at the beginning, for example this right here, can be expressed as Okay, r sends nothing other than our integer part at the front, a plus. And then what we have is d1 concatenated up until the n divided by 10 to the nth power. And all of this is going to be added to p divided by 10 to the nth power minus 1 multiplied with 1 tenth to the nth power basically. So plus and now we are going to get p divided by 10 to the nth power times 10 to the nth power minus 1. And well this basically concludes the proof that um, all repeating decimal numbers are actually um, rational numbers because obviously a is an integer by our definition right here with lots of generality, meaning the integers are a subset of the rational numbers. This right here is rational. This obviously is rational since the concatenation of d1 up until the n is also some kind of integer divided by integer is going to give us um, by definition a rational number. We said in the last video that this right here is also going to be a rational number, meaning if we add rational numbers together it's also going to be rational. And after you're done with the proof, <laughs> you, you can only have a proof if you have a theorem uh, stated at a blackboard, you can put your QED box or you are going to put your easy stamp here on the chalkboard to finish off the proof. Yeah. Um, how does this help now? Uh, how does this help convert number like this into basically a fraction? Well, by just going through this procedure. There, there are only a few things you need to consider now. Let us take a look at this number right here. Okay, so we got 420 as being our integer part at the front. So what we have is 420 plus. Also what you can do is you can bring all of those to a common uh, denominator at the fractions together but it's going to be really ugly. Rather go through this procedure. So we got 420 as being the front part, the integer part. Then what you're going to do is you are going to take all the numbers up until the, the repeating part behind the decimal place. Meaning those are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, concatenated. You are going to put it to the top of your fraction divided by and now we are going to count how many places you basically have right here. I mean what we have here are four places meaning we are going to need 10 to the fourth power. So this gives us overall 10,000. Okay and after that what you are going to do is you are going to add to this whole thing the repeating part yet again just like in the last video. So this is going to give us 69 divided by and now exactly this number 10k 
and you're going to multiply it by, and once again, you are just going to fill in each and every integer that we have up here or, or digit with nines. So 10,000 multiplied by 99 is going to give you um, 999,000 overall. And yeah, this is basically it. You can choose each and every other repeating decimal that you would like, and you can go through the same procedure and get yourself a nice, <laughs> I wouldn't call it nice, but a good expression, okay? And this is actually something I cover in class two. Like mentioned before in the last video, I'm not going to cover it in, in its entirety using this abstract notation right here, but um, sometimes I choose a number like, let's say, um, I used in their last exam 1.05 repeating, and they just had to go through the whole process. Meaning what we had is we had a one, in, in the front, I, I told the kids to, to ignore it and once we corrected everything. And then you are going to multiply this right here by um, 10 squared, basically to get the five periodic to the front and then go through the whole periodic, periodic procedure to arrive at a nice expression. Yeah, but this is basically it. With, with this example, it's pretty nice because um, this part right here is actually going to vanish in the process. So all that you really get is one plus and then you are going to just get um, five periodic divided by 990. Yeah, exactly. And this is by, no, by, uh, by 99, I think. Yeah, 99. <laughs> No, 90, 90, it's, it's only 90, never mind. Um, it, it was just a less little example, try it out for yourself. Hope you did enjoy what you saw today. This was just something I, I really want to cover here because I think it's, it's quite interesting and I believe not many people have seen the procedure of going through um, the abstract ways of proving, uh, proving something like this in the first place. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe, make a comment, channel flag, if you want to support the channel a bit more. Buy the teachers I create or support the kitty caddies on Patreon. Um, yeah, we also got a lot of STEM merch over on STEM merch. Check it out, like the new with lots of generality <laughs> t-shirt. And yeah, now I'm going to chill out a bit and I'm wishing you a flamble day. Please stay safe. Ciao. <laughs>